Okay, Sergeant, will you please start your recordings? PC recording is up. Recording to the cloud, all set. May I begin? Uh, uh, good morning, first. everyone. Welcome to today's remote New York City Council vote of the Committee on Land Use. At this time, will all panelists please turn on your video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices to vibrate or silent. Thank you for your cooperation. Chair Salamanca, we are ready to begin. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant of Arms. Good morning. I am Council Member Rafael Salamanca, Chair of the Committee on I am joined remotely today by Council Members Rivera, Adams, Ayala, Barron, Morelli, Brannon, Deutsch, Diaz Sr., Gibson, Gredenchik, Kuhl, Miller, Chemoya, Reynoso, Chair Riley, and Rivera. Uh, today we will vote on several applications referred out from our subcommittees. Uh, but before we begin, I would like to recognize the council, the committee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. I am Julie Lubin, counsel for this committee. Council members who would like to ask questions or make, make remarks should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions or remarks in the order that they raise their hands. Chair Salamanca will then recognize members to speak. We ask that you please be patient if any te technical difficulties arise today. Chair Salamanca will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Council. Uh, from our landmark subcommittee today, we will vote to approve LU 726, an application submitted by the Department of Housing and Preservation and Development pursuant to Section 505 of the Article 15 of the General Municipal Law and Section 197C of the New York City Charter, requesting approval of the 16th Amendment to the, East Har to the Harlem East Harlem Urban Renewal Plan. The amendment would extend the duration of the Harlem East Harlem Urban Renewal Plan for 40 years from its expiration date in December of 2020 to maintain design control established under the plan. The Harlem East Harlem Urban Renewal Area includes property and council members Ayala and Perkins. We will also vote to approve LU 725, the Everlasting Pine HDFC ground lease amendment submitted by the Department of Housing, Preservation and Development. This application is for approval of an urban development action project for rehab, rehabilitation and stabilize an 87 unit affordable senior housing development located at 96 Baxter Street in Manhattan. This application was submitted to fulfill the commitment under the Rikers Island Points of Agreement Acknowledgement acknowledging the seven year demolition of the Manhattan Detention Complex adjacent to 96 Baxter in order to develop the Manhattan Borough Base Jail. HPD will provide financing for the physical protection of the existing building. This project is located in Council Members Chen's district. The third item we will vote to approve is LU 724, the Landmark Preservation Commission designation of the East 25th Street Historic District. This district consists of an intact group of 56 row houses framing East 25th Street between Clarendon Road and Avenue D in the Flashbook neighborhood of, of Brooklyn in council district, in council member Lewis's district. All of the houses were built by a single developer, the Henry Meyer Building Company between 1909 and 1912 and designed by the firm of Glukoff and Glukoff in the Renaissance revival style. From our zoning subcommittee, we will vote to approve with modification LU 714 and 715 for the 42-11 9th Street Special Permit application relating to property in Council Member Van Bringer's district. The application seeks a zoning tax amendment and a special permit to include a project area in a new industrial business incentive area and to allow modifications of various bulk and use regulations, including floor area increase for certain industrial and incentive uses up to a maximum FAR of 6.5. This will facilitate the development of a new 21 story building with approximately 64,000 square feet of required industrial uses, 254,000 square feet of commercial uses and 3,000 square feet of ground floor retail. Our modification will be to include annual third party reporting requirements related to compliance for owners within the proposed incentive business incentive area two. We will also vote to disapprove 
pre-considers LU 722 and 723, the 16 Avenue rezoning related to property in Borough Park neighborhood in Councilmember Yeager's district in Brooklyn. The application seeks a zoning map amendment to change an R5 and R5 slash C2-2 district to a C4-4A district and a related zoning tax amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing options one and two in order to facilitate the development of a five-story commercial office building. We have carefully considered the actions and have ultimately concluded that a disapproval is appropriate here. The rezoning area is a low density neighborhood dominated by one to three story buildings. The proposed zoning would permit buildings up to 95, 95 feet, which is out of context with the character of the surrounding area. This rezoning would also upzone and potentially induce displacement on non applicant control sites, including a residential building next to the proposed development site and a MICK-VAH, an important religious and community resource for the neighborhood. Both the community board and the borough president noted the inappropriate height and bulk allowed by the proposed C4-4A district, as well as the, the, the detrimental traffic and parking impacts of a new commercial development. The applicant failed to adequately address these concerns throughout the public process, and so far, all these reasons, we will recommend disapproval. We will also vote to approve with modifications pre-considers LU 727 and 728 for the 9114 Fifth Avenue rezoning related to property in Councilmember Brandon's district in Brooklyn. The application seeks a zoning map amendment to change C8-2 district to an R7A slash C2-4 zoning district and a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing options one and two for the project site as well as for a larger rezoning area. These actions are intended to facilitate the development of a nine-story, 45,000 square feet mixed-use residential building with ground floor commercial uses and 41 units of housing on the project site, which fronts on a wide street. We have heard concerns from the community board and the borough president regarding the appropriateness of the R7A district map on these three lots, three lots with two-story residential buildings on the corner of 4th Avenue and 92nd Street. R7A districts allow for a maximum FAR of 4.6 with MIH, as well as a commercial use of up to maximum FAR of 2.0 with a maximum height of 95 feet or nine stories. The proposed rezoning would allow for a higher density and height than is appropriate on this part of 92nd Street. A narrow street would currently consist of two-story residential and three-story residential mixed-use buildings on the north side of 92nd Street and a seven-story commercial building on the south side. For this reason, we are modifying the application to apply more moderate uh, R6A zoning district on these lots instead. The west side of 4th Avenue across the street from these two-story buildings is currently mapped with an R6A slash C2-3 zoning district. RC, R, R6A zoning district permits a, max, permits a maximum FAR of 3.0 for residential uses with a maximum base height of 65 feet and an overall maximum building height of 75 feet above a required setback. These properties are in the Bay Ridge Special District, which has goals of maintaining the existing scale and character of the residential and commercial community and encourages development, which is in the character with the neighborhood. By modifying the zoning map to step down to an R6A district towards 4th Avenue, we would bring the non-conforming lots into conformance, but also ensure that the appropriate height and density matching the surrounding context. We are also modifying the proposed MIA zoning text amendment by adding the workforce option in addition to options one and two. My colleagues, Council Member Brandon is here to speak more about this modification. And Council Member Brandon, I will give you the floor. Thank you so much, Chair Salamanca and all my colleagues uh, for the opportunity to speak today to express my support of this proposed rezoning. Um, as Chair Salamanca explained in his introduction, the application will change the zoning map by mapping R6A and R7A districts on properties that are now mapped only for commercial use. Um, the rezoning will map MIH over the entire rezoning area. Um, what we had here was a developer who could have built a hotel as of right uh, in an area where uh, we desperately need affordable housing or schools. Um, so in order to get this done, uh, we had to work um, to do a rezoning um, to basically block 
uh, the hotel from, from being built. Uh, this is significant for me because it's the first ever MIH mapping in my uh, community district. Um, just last week, DCP published an analysis confirming what we already see on the ground, that some neighborhoods have borne a disproportionate burden of increased development. Um, in Brooklyn, uh, Community Board 1 uh, has added over 20,000 new units of housing in the past decade. Uh, by contrast, my area, my community board has added less than 300 units, um, which is not acceptable to me by any means. So uh, we're desperate for affordable housing here. Um, this is not a perfect project, um, but this is a project that has community support and will provide new residential units and neighborhoods serving retail on the ground floor. Uh, the community worked for about two years very closely on this project um, to bring this developer to a place of compromise for public benefit and Bay Ridge deserves this chance to build uh, more affordable housing. So I urge my um, colleagues on the committee um, led by Chair Salamanca to listen to the community and support this project. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Councilman Brandon. Um, just give me one second here. Okay. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, now moving along, we will also vote to approve pre-considers LU numbers 729 for the 214-32 Hillside Avenue rezoning related to property in Council Member Gordentis District in Queens. The application seeks a zoning map amendment to map a C2-3 commercial overlay district in an existing R2 district to facilitate the development of a new two-story commercial building with five accessory parking spaces and one loading berth. Now, members of the committee and members representing affected districts who have questions or remarks about today's items to use the raise hand button now. Council, will you announce members in the order that the hands were raised? Uh, yes, Chair Salamanca, Council Member Gradenchik has his hand raised. Okay, Council Member Gradenchik, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair Salamanca. I, I just want to um, urge a yes vote on the Hillside Avenue rezoning. It's a small rezoning. Um, I wanna thank the land use staff for working so closely uh, with me and my staff. Uh, there were many meetings and as we know, uh, every rezoning can get very, very complicated. This is a small one, but I think it's a very good one for the community. And I, I wanna thank those who had proposed the rezoning for working so closely with my office and with the community to make sure that it is uh, in all ways a positive impact for the Queens Village community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Member Gredenchik. Um, Council, are there any other hands up? Anyone else wish to speak? I see no other hands raised. Okay, thank you. So seeing none, I now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve LU 724, 725, 726, and 729, and to approve the modifications as I've described, LU 714, 715, 727, and 728, and to disapprove LU 722 and 723. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. I um I vote aye on all, and I just want to give a special congratulations to Councilmember Brandon for really putting this um this uh, development to work for his community and bringing affordable housing there. Congrats, Gibson. To want to congratulate Council Member Justin Brannon on a great job. I hope you're feeling better. Continued praise to you and your family. I vote aye on all. Baron. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Oh. Yes, and, Council Member Barron to explain yes. her vote. Uh, I want to commend uh, Council Member Brannon for the work that was done, but I still have some concerns. And for that reason, I will be abstaining on 727, 728 and I'll be voting aye on all the others. Thank you. Thank you. Deutsch. Aye and all. Ku. Aye on all, and congratulations to Council Member Blender. Levin. I don't know. Thank you. Miller. Vote aye. 
Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote. Councilman Marinosa to explain his vote. Um, yesterday we had a long hearing related to comprehensive planning for land use. Um, it, it's, it's unfortunate that in certain districts, certain council members have to fight against uh, the potential development of an unwanted or unwanted development. Um, and because of it, uh, losing leverage and you know, forcing their hand to build, you know, to not build necessarily affordable housing. And um, I just hope that you know, when the time comes and we have to pass legislation or do the work to move away from this Euler process that allows for developers to have the upper hand, that everybody is on board because we're continuing to see the same thing. These black and brown districts building all the truly affordable housing in the city of New York while everyone else gets a pass. Um, and it's just at some time legislatively, we're gonna have to, have to think of a fix or actually do it um, so we can see affordable housing across um, our city. But given the circumstances, I actually do think um, this was a, a well put together plan um, in South Brooklyn, so I'm going to vote aye on all. Um, and a congratulations to Councilmember Justin Brennan. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilmember Traeger. I vote aye. Gorenchik. Aye. Adams. Congratulations to Councilmembers Brennan and Councilmember Gorenchik on your first. I vote aye on all. Ayala. Congratulations to Councilmember Brennan and I vote aye. Ruben Diaz Sr. Forty yes all on all. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye. Rivera. Aye on all. Riley. Uh, good morning. I vote I on all, and I would like to congratulate my colleagues, Councilmember Brandon and Councilmember Grudenchik, um, on um, adding so much value to your districts. I vote I on all. Thank you. Borelli. I'd like to associate myself with all the nice comments about Councilmembers Brandon and Grudenchik, and I vote I on all. By vote of 17 in the affirmative, zero in the negative and no abstentions, all items are adopted with land use items 727 and 728 being adopted by a vote of 16 in the affirmative, zero in the negative and one abstention. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, clerk. I would like to thank members of the public, my colleagues and council and land use staff for attending today's hearing. 